This is just a quick demo on how to solder up one of the Corelux LDD driver boards. Uh, you can see here we have the LDD6, but really the procedure is the same for any of the boards. Uh, the parts that it comes with include the uh, terminal blocks, so you'll have enough terminal blocks to complete your build. And one of the first things you'll want to do is uh, assemble the terminal blocks. So you can see that they have kind of a tongue and groove construction here. You can actually slide them together as, as such. Uh, boom, boom, boom. There we go. And just make sure that they're nice and flush when you've slid them together. And you can see here the uh, assembled terminal blocks here and they will match up perfectly with the holes on the board for them. And the next part you want to do is get your LDD drivers. In the case for this video, we're going to go ahead and use uh, the 24-pin uh, dip sockets that we carry. Uh, the dip sockets allow you to plug in the driver boards on a uh, temporary basis. So if you change your mind on using like 1000 milliamps versus 700 milliamps, you can go ahead and swap out the driver uh, instead of having the driver stuck on the board if, if you hadn't used these sockets. So the sockets are quite useful. And let's begin with the soldering. So for soldering, you're going to want to go to the back side of the board. And we tend to use uh, some flux, and the flux really helps the solder flow well. And just because of the height of these uh, sockets here, I'm going to start off uh, doing the sockets. And so you can see if I start off on this guy, I'm going to apply some flux to the pads, apply some flux to the pins of the LDD socket. Liberal amount of flux is always a good help. And then go ahead and align the pin with the pad there. You can see it just drops right in. I have already removed the extra pins here. And go ahead and put it on the back side so that it's flush. Now, what I'd like to do now is take my soldering iron soldering iron here. I have a nice flat chisel tip here and the chisel tip helps uh, with the heat transfer. So just apply that pressure there, get the heat flowing, and then go ahead and put some solder on the pin. And there we go. That's, uh, that pin is not fully soldered yet because uh, as you can see uh, the socket isn't quite flat and so what I want to do is put some pressure on the socket to make it flat as I reheat the pin and that will seat the socket flat and I'll go ahead and tack down the other side here, the other corner and you can see it reflowing nicely and just wait till those two pins set up and then I can go ahead and hit the rest of the pins And you want to be especially careful not to get a solder bridge between these particular pins right here, these two, because this one is your PWM signal pin, and this one is actually your voltage input pin from the power supply, which can carry 48 volts, whereas this pin here only wants to accept up to 5 volts. So if you accidentally cross those two pins with a solder bridge, well, there's going to be some smoke coming out.
And after you finish soldering the, uh, the LDDs or the sockets on, you can go ahead and put the terminals in. Uh, once again, you're going to want to use copious amounts of flux. And that will help the solder flow nicely. I'm going to go ahead and flux each of these pads. And just do a big flux here. And flux the pins here. This one's not quite aligned, so I'll give it a little bit of a push here. Okay. And let's go ahead and insert the terminals. When you're putting in the terminals, make sure the, uh, the input side is facing out on both sides, so you can actually get your wires in. And then you can just flip it over. Make sure it's nicely seated by pushing down on it. And we go ahead and solder those terminal blocks. Now if you're a little OCD like me, you can go ahead and tack the first two. Or the ones on opposite sides here. That'll just seat the outsides of the terminal blocks. And then go ahead and flip it over and make sure it's nice and straight. You can see it likes, it likes to flex a little bit sometimes. So it looks like both of them are bowing outwards. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of pressure on each one. one from the outside as I tack down the center pin or as close to the center as I can get. And I went ahead and hit the, the back side of the board with some alcohol to clean off the flux residue. And once it's clean, you can do a visual inspection and see that there's no bridging between any of the pins. And so it should check out electrically. And on the back side, or on the front side, I should say, you can see that all the sockets have been installed. Uh, all the pins that should be there are. Uh, the, uh, the headers are straight uh, and it's overall a very clean looking board and ready to accept your Meanwell LDD drivers. Alright, happy building!